I don't know why I was there because I wasn't in the scene, but I looked at George like, where, where's this coming from? And he just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And a very highly happy Halloween, as we are going back to the Seminole Storage Facility with the cast of George Romero's 1985 classic, Day of the Dead. So without further ado, let's uh, go on down to Frankenstein's Corral and see who we find. Our first guest is an actor whose body of work includes Creepshow, Knight Riders, and the title role in Martin. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Dr. Ted Fisher. Please welcome John Amplis. Hello. Hello, John. How are you? Very well, thanks. How are you doing? I am good in my corner of the world. So glad to have you here. Uh, a great fan of, of your body of work and your all your collaborations. And like I said, it is Halloween, but uh, because of Creepshow, having you here, all I can think of is Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> That's what most people think of when they me. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, John, so glad to have you here. Welcome to our GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you. Happy to be here. Indeed. And next, he is an actor and stunt performer who is whose body of work includes Pirates of the Caribbean, Mask of Zorro, Friday the 13th, and Knight Riders. Today he joins us to discuss the multiple roles of Private Juan Torres and a few of the ghouls themselves. Please welcome Tazo and Starbacus. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Tazo, how are you, sir? Uh-oh. Tasso's frozen. Oh, no. oh there no, he's, he's just slowed down. That's okay. Hey, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Oh, okay. glad to have you here, boss. How are you doing in your corner of the world? Oh, he's got a, he's got a delay. I haven't done well. I'm getting I'm on stage. Oh dear! Yeah, well, you got it very well. We're doing a haunted hayride here on the farm, so the kids are really enjoying it. Awesome! Uh, yeah, Tazo, you got a bit of a lag. Um, I may oh, ask dear. you to uh, to pull pull out and jump back in again. Sometimes that does fix the connection. So can, let me ask can you to I do that. Do anything to fix it? Uh, yeah. All I need to do is just exit out of of our chat room here and come back in again on the original link, and that should go the way too. So, all right. Well, John, let's bring on our next guest. <laughs> yeah, let's do. <laughs> yeah, let's do. Okay. He's an actor whose work includes Two Evil Eyes, Monkey Shines, and Night Riders as well. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Private Miguel Salazar. Please welcome Anton DeLeo Jr. Hey, hey. Many, many happy returns this Halloween. Hey, and to you, boss. How you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, we, I am good in my corner of the world. Uh, Tazo, you're looking much better already. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay, it's that's good. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes take a couple times at bat. So very good. So, uh, Eton, you're doing well in your corner of the world. How's the How's the football game going? Football game is over, and okay. we won. All, All right. right, you got you have my full attention. Oh, Go that's forward. great! It's Halloween. We got you here, and the team won. We are off to a solid start, and let's keep this energy going on because next he is an actor. His roles include True Grit, The Nick, and Grand Theft Auto Four. Today he joins us to discuss the role of radio operator William Bill McDermott. Please welcome Charlotte Conroy. Hello, 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 Charlotte Conroy. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Did you call me w William Phil McDermott? William Bill. Oh, William Bill. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just wondered if I'd missed something. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. How, how are you doing in your corner of the world? Doing very well. I just got in a few minutes ago from the Chiller Theater in Persephone, New Jersey. Oh, uh, that's probably go. why Terry is a bit late as well, because he was with me coming in. Oh, that's and, quite uh, all right. Quite all right. Absolutely glad to have you here. Glad to, glad see to be here. The world. And then next... She is an actress whose credits include Tales of the Dark Side, The Equalizer, and Doomsday. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of scientist Dr. Sarah Bowman. Please welcome Laurie Cardell. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey. 
Hi, hey, Lori. Hey, Cass. Thank you very much, sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice to meet Patty, and nice to meet all of you out there in, in uh, internet land. <laughs> Absolutely. Lori, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here today. And gentlemen, thank you all for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through the chat room right now to pull out the uh, questions for you. In the meantime, I'm just going to throw this out. Um, any production is going to be fraught with uh, all kinds of uh, mishaps and whatnot. A horror film involving special effects, special effects makeup and everything else, uh, those dangers are quintupled. So for each of you, what would you think was the craziest day you had on the set of Day of the Dead? Oh. Oh. Wow. Tim, I think you probably could start with that. <laughs> I think yeah, every day really. was, I think every day was pretty yeah. crazy. Because we yeah. were down in a mine. Down in a mine. We went down before the sun came up and we came up after the sun had set. So we began to wither like uh, flowers. We never saw the sun. That's right. <laughs> and also yeah. I think some of the more memorable days are when the special effects were you know, we're, we're being done the practical things that we didn't do CG. I mean, Tom Savini right. was the master. And this is, uh, this was, uh, this was Greg Nicotero's first job and he was learning under Tom. Anyway. Yeah. Some of that stuff. That's why I was thinking, what about you, Tim, with the guts coming out of your stomach and well, I, I, think the, uh, I think, I think the time in Florida was, Breaking up. Oh yeah, lost a bit. I remember a time when there was a a, a a a man who was a black belt in karate, and he was he was he's the guy in the kimono in the movie, and I had to hit him with a shovel. And I I took him aside because we had we had befriended each other, and, and he told me some stories about his past and his his physicalness, and I took him aside and I said, I'm now going to have to hit you with a, a rubber shovel on the side of the head, so please don't react in the karate mode. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't. He was very good. That, 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 was, that was a good, uh, yeah, that was a good pregame uh, uh, chat. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> very, and important, because he told me stories that uh, made me nervous. <laughs> well, I can tell a story of... Uh, you know, people that know Day of the Dead are real fans of Day of the Dead, probably know some of these stories, so I feel bad repeating them. But for those that don't, uh, when we did the scene of the wall, um, it took a long time for them to make the wall. And although I shot the first scene in, a, a, it was a um, cement room with these cement blocks, the, the for that effect, they had to build a wall and have hands come through it. And uh, so on the first take, you know, you don't want to mess it up because that was a lot of money they put into making this wall. Anyway, to make a long story short, they said, you know, take one, boom. And the hands went through and the whole wall fell on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was really funny, I have to say. So we had to wait a couple of days till they built that, um, until they built that wall. The other one was when I cut up uh, Tim's arm, Anthony's arm. Uh, so they had poor... Anthony, he had to put his hand, we were in the cave and he had to put his hand underneath him in the ditch and it was wet on the floor. And so they, uh, so it looked like they had a little fake um, arm over here. And the first time I went down to chop it off, the sword just bounced off of the prosthetic. <laughs> I don't know what, so they had to, it, it was just made out of like, uh, I don't know what the material didn't work. Let's just put it that way. And so they, they built a wax arm uh, so that it did work. And uh, yeah, but we take, took hours to set that up. Yeah. <laughs> hours. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Can we please get some limbs that are uh, severed limbs that can be severed, please? Props. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That looks like Tim's arm. Well, we put it like this, Russ, so the camera's right on the wound, which was so brave of George, I thought, in those days to do that was, you know, incredibly brave and not done a lot in films to go in for the close-up of the burned arm. Talk about guts and guts. George, George did a lot of things that nobody else did, right. and a lot of people have tried to imitate since then, and I think have fallen, fallen short. But I give him credit for trying. Uh, when he was, when they were tearing the guts out of uh, uh, Joe Pilato, 
the, the Rhodes fella. Uh, I, I I don't know why I was there because I wasn't in the scene, but I looked at George like, where where's this coming from? And he just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> 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 he was a good. He was that a good was guy. Tearing the guts out, by the way. Hmm? Oh yeah, Casso was getting his guts torn out. That was me tearing Joe's guts out too. I was yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. And they were real. They were real guts. Yep, they were lamb intestines, and of course, there's a very famous story about them going bad, rotting uh, in the yeah. fridge. We we left and went to Florida to shoot for two weeks. And the people who owned the mine shut the power off, including the refrigerator where the lamb intestines were stored. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Back, oh. we shoot that scene, and we couldn't, you know, Tom didn't want to drive downtown Pittsburgh and spend four hours uh, to get more lamb intestines. So we just used the rotted ones. Uh, for, and, of course, everybody got sick from the smell. It was just oh, horrible. Yeah. I think it's funny when people gag, don't you? For some okay. reason, that makes me laugh. And thinking of you guys shooting that scene with all the gagging, oh my God, I would, I couldn't, I, I would have broke tape. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that would have been a good one. John, you got a got a recollection from the set that was just a wacky day. I think my most interesting day was the first day. Um, we were shooting. Uh, actually, Bob was shooting. Um, uh, was my first scene um and, and what was interesting about it was to be there to watch howard sherman do what he does um I, and and watching him was just absolutely fascinating uh him creating all of these little bits you know picking up the telephone looking at looking at things and uh, I was just, I was pulled in. I want, I wanted to watch the movie from that point on. I mean, I wanted to be, I knew I was in good hands, certainly with the people that were surrounding me. I just thought Howard's performance was beyond the pale. I, I would concur. It, it was, it's, it's a very undervalued performance. Oh, I it, think, I, I, I think people do it because they, it, the the more erudite side of cinemaphiles, you know, tend to be, oh yeah, George Romero is good, but those are horror movies or whatever. But no, there's there's a lot of professionalism going on in these oh. films that I feel is is yet to give in his proper heraldry. I was mesmerized by his work. I mean, it was it was fascinating to me. Uh, and we were absolutely. all theater actors coming together, so we all had a lot of experience, mostly in theater, really. And yeah. um, so. George, you know, he really did take carefully pick his people, which was nice. Yeah. Yeah, he very very much so it was a very he again, I from the outside people tend to just like, oh yeah, it's zombies and chewing people and everything else. I'm like, you know, there's a lot of human interaction in all of his films going on a lot. It's not just, you know, 90 minutes of, of cannibalism and everything else. There's serious allegories about society and, his, and how he felt about it. And and I think that's ultimately the magic underneath his 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 zombie films that I think a lot of people still don't realize. It's like it's about it's about people and it's about society and it's about where we were and his perception at the time he was making it. Oh, they study him in colleges and universities. In fact, there's a horror study in Pitt university right now. And it was all precipitated by George's career. They, uh, the, the archives has, uh, at the Hillman library has a lot of George's stuff and they're acquiring other people's stuff now. Uh, so if if you want to study, you know, horror movies, go to Pitt because it really is a very, um, I think, incredibly intellectual process. And I think people know that, but know that. But if you don't know it, then watch it again. Well, there have been theses written on all of George's films, mm -hmm. uh, academic theses that I read and can't understand fully, <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, his admirers are out there and, and the people that um, uh, love him um, are, are everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Many in our audience. Anthony, you actually muted yourself. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself, uh, you were telling us a story and you were like, it, it began with back in Florida and we, then we lost you. 
You're muted. Anthony. Yeah, Anthony, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. So there's a button on your phone or on this. Uh, okay. You're muted. Touch the touch At your the pad. Touch the. At the bottom, it says mute, stop camera, all those. Hit mute. It'll unmute you. Yeah, okay. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. Uh, Paul, our producer, if you want to call him directly and uh, see if you can uh, leave that to that. In the meantime, I'll tell you what. We're ready to go on our audience questions, so let's go ahead and pivot over to them. And thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. And our first question <laughs> comes from... From Roslyn, and they want to know, ah, what was the first zombie movie you ever saw, and what did you think of it? Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. I mean, George, yeah. you know, they, they had little, I think some movies, a lot of mo movies were made around the Caribbean kind of uh, zombie, uh, you know, taking the, the drug and being that kind of a zombie, but... Um, George never called them zombies. He wow. called them ghouls. Ghouls. And uh, cool. so, yeah. I saw something when I was a kid, and I never, I never did track it down to see what it was. But I remember the scene. It was a. You were right. It's a Caribbean thing. They were on a boat or an island, and the zombies were walking underwater to come and get them, and <laughs> terrified me for some reason. Shockwaves. Was that what it was? Yeah, uh, they were dressed in uh, German uniforms, and no. they have goggles on their heads. This is back in the '60s. Okay, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But, oh, or it it could have been um, it could have been it could have it could have been zombie the uh, like uh, zombie? The first one. Yeah, because because that had a that had a that a zombie the, the Italian one that had a zombie actually fighting a shark at one point and <laughs> it, it was an actual guy in full makeup with a real shark that they had roped off underwater holding his breath and like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like Sharknado <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> so uh, crazy stuff so uh, Charlotte do you recall the first uh, zombie or ghoul film that you ever saw well I think the first movie I did see was the um... Night of the Living Dead, but before that, when I was a kid, I uh, saw a movie called The Mummy. It's a very old film. Carla, and, and you know this mummy shuffled around. I can't. It really scared the whatever you want to say uh, out of me. And uh, so <laughs> that was my encounter with the early horror. Yeah. What was it? Uh, the black and white one with Boris Karloff, or was the color one with Christopher Lee? Do no, it was black and white. Black and white, so it was Karloff. Okay. Or it could have been Lon Chaney Jr. They did several, but yeah, yeah. the, but the it was shambling. Severe. It was severe. Yeah. I was at the I was at the original Night of the Living Dead premiere. Um, okay. I was like fourteen years old. Oh wow! Wow. Oh. And uh, with my dad, and I hated horror movies. I was so, I never understood what people like to be frightened. And I was out frightened in real life. So um, I stood, most of the time, I stood in the back of the theater and then I would go out into the lobby because I couldn't, I was so scared. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, very nice. So there you have it. Rosalind, great question to start us off with. Thank you for that. And what do we have next? Here's oh wait we have a new panelist uh, Tasso who's uh who's our uh, furry friend here I don't that's know. a lovely dog didn't even name him yet shit hits oh. far as his name <laughs> <laughs> oh he gets all he's he's really lovely. Lovely. oh that's a very very, very cute pup oh he's uh, a puppy yeah yeah Aww. he's a pup. He's barking and he's making a mess and ah well oh that's that's part of the fun <laughs> yeah. yeah ah and our next question goes from Madison who wants to know what got each of you into acting huh I I I think childhood trauma yeah <laughs> that's true <laughs> I think that's absolutely true <laughs> and, and the other part of it is absolutely true. <laughs> and the other part is it was something that it was something that nobody wanted to teach like you say you know, I want to be an actor and they say oh yeah okay well what do you want to do 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> and right. but how are you going to make a living? <laughs> all of that. And yeah. but somehow it was a it was a it was a passion. It was a compulsion. Mm -hmm. And it's the only time, or it's the only way to do it. I was in my senior class play, and I went to an all-girls school, and I played a funny character, and I made the audience laugh, yeah. and I loved that. And um, so I heard that Carnegie Mellon had a really good acting school, and I happened to be from Pittsburgh, and I auditioned, and I got in, which is crazy, because that Juilliard and CMU were the two top acting schools. And uh, but I got in and it, it just I, I, I loved it. I found when Charla said about about, um, you know, trauma, honestly, I think a lot of being able to feel things on stage, developing characters was truly a lifesaver for a lot of us that did have traumatic childhoods or traumas in our life. And for me, I would be I'm very not now, but I'm I was always very shy and but if I put a character together, I could really be that character. And it was such yeah. a joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started at 10. My uncle was involved in community theater in Pittsburgh. And he cast me in a play called Dark Top of the Stairs. And uh, that was the first that was the first time I uh, ever was on stage. Well, it was in the round, actually. Cause oh, wow. They would, community theaters in Pittsburgh would do it in open spaces and, you know, create chairs and, you know, that kind of thing. But I worked, you know, as a kid doing that kind of thing uh, up until I was about 15 or 16. Uh, and then I forgot about it altogether and um, went to the Army and got into a play my last year of the Army. And came back and decided, I wonder if I could do this. Hmm. Went to a sister school, Point Park University in Pittsburgh. Yeah, grade school. Uh, we were there the same time. Yeah, I can't cool. believe it. No. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The old man. You. <laughs> different schools, and we didn't know each other. <laughs> oh. But, um, yeah, and then I went to Point Park at 23. So I was a little bit long in the tooth at that point and um and that's what what got it there for me i found home in the theater is really what happened which kind of yeah is about is about you know that trauma we talk about uh because home was a kind of strange place for me as yeah. a kid uh, uh, growing uh, up the um, theater is a very theater is a very forgiving place too. It's I find. very forgiving, and it has to be. Yeah, it, really. Right, it's community, and it was really became my first real family because all of those people are still part of my life. Right, and you have to be intimate to be good actors. So you are have to really take chances in front of these people you're working with. So yes. uh, yeah. you do get very close. Yeah, right. that's true. Very much so, very much so. Anthony, welcome back. The question on the table is, what yeah. inspired everybody to become uh, actors, performers? Oh, geez. My, uh, <laughs> my family too, history. Huh? Yeah. Uh, my family history is in music. And uh, I was always kind of either watching people perform or having to perform because I played the piano at an early age. Oh. And uh, that was kind of the bike right there. there yeah. There it have it. That's it. Hey, that, that's, that's all it takes, just be a, growing up in that environment. And Tasso, bring us home. Um, my father was a Greek Orthodox priest. So I grew up watching him perform oh in front of a crowd. So it was no problem for me to be, uh, let's see, my first oh. star role was as the gingerbread man in the second grade. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then you know, in school, but we did stuff in history class. I, I was Simone Boulevard. I came in complete cost. <laughs> I'd taken a pair of ear turns <laughs> out face. Uh, high school with a great theater teacher, Larry Servi, sent me on to Carnegie Mellon 
and then and so the acting was oh, was always easy and uh, and a pleasant experience for me and I didn't have much trauma until I met Jarlath and then very scared <laughs> there you have it Madison That's thank you come back at you thanks Madison. thank you great question and what do we have next here's one yeah. from Alex ah uh, how long well not a lot of you uh Tasso, you uh, you were you were uh, in ghoul makeup. Uh, how long did it take you to get into makeup and wardrobe for uh, for Gosh, your characters? You know, I've submitted myself to Guinness as the most zombies ever in film and television. Oh my! So, and they haven't answered me yet. But, uh, <laughs> so half of my life, I'm sure, has been spent makeup on and off. Nobody what's thinks. The, what's the figure? What is the figure? Gosh, I I forgot. It's there's a lot. Uh, and, and just in Day of the Dead, I think I did ten or eleven. Um, wow. There's a there's a scene in Day where I'm fighting myself, and I don't think that was a zombie though. But I I played two of the soldiers fighting up on a scaffolding and threw myself off. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I had nothing to do with that. I might have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it takes it takes hours. My head getting ripped off was probably the most. Um, one of the most delicate and, and extensive makeups that I've ever done. That took three hours upside down in wow. the in that palette. Yeah. Um, and so there there you have it. it, it it's hours. Indeed. And you can uh, yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. John, out of curiosity, how long to get in and out of the creep show costume? Uh, once it was made, not long, but uh, my first week of working on creep show was um, – I sat under plaster, uh, most of my body, uh, my head, my chest, my arms, my hands. Um, and I was there for about a week. And then I went away and uh, Tom built the creature and came back and shot for a week. Uh, getting in and out of the costume at that point was pretty easy. Sure. Um, it was hot, but uh, other than that small um you know problem uh relatively simple L longer to make and molds than to actually get on exactly. off exactly exactly there you go we're, we're we're always that easy with the effects like that so an hour, an hour took forever i mean right every day with uh bub he was, yeah, um, really. Oh yeah. Yeah, because Brutal. he had to be consistent every day. You know, going as a character. During that shoot, I never saw Bub. I never saw Howard. Right. <laughs> I only yeah, right. right. <laughs> come to set, he would be in, he would be in full makeup. Uh, and uh, I would leave and he'd still be in full makeup. <laughs> And let's go ahead and roll another one. Here's one from Andre. <laughs> Do you think your your roles in this movie have prepped you in case of a real zombie apocalypse? <laughs> hmm. oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but my childhood prepared me. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, it feels like there's a, an apocalypse going on right now. It does feel like it. Yeah, that that's. What I was yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Like we're mm -hmm. we are being attacked by zombies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I think by surviving, we tell the truth. That's what I do, at least. That's all. That's truthful, honest. That's what it's about. Oh. No. I, I think my my takeaway from this is um, always make sure you're good friends with a helicopter pilot. Okay. You do that? Do you fly one, Patty? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> but if I suspect it to be one of those ones, you know what? I think I'm going to become pals with a helicopter chopper pilot and just <laughs> have him, keep him in my close circle of friends, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there you have it, Andre. Thank you for that question. What do we have next? From Sam. Ah, what is everyone's favorite scary movie? Wow. Yeah. That's uh, I love letting the right one in. The Exorcist, the Exorcist scared me. Oh yeah, yeah that's terrifying. And I was, I was in my twenties yeah. when I thought. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Well, my friend wanted to see it with her family and um, the theater was completely booked. There were so many people there and her father had just died and they all had to sit in different seats because it was so jam packed and they went to the exorcist. They were like so freaked out as you can imagine. If you're brought up Catholic, by the way, you were yeah. freaked out. I didn't watch that movie till like maybe 20 years ago. I couldn't. I don't have a favorite scare. You know, when you think about Night of the Living Dead, though, honestly, that was so revolutionary, people eating people. It, 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 you know, that was so, wow, over the top and so underground and so unusual. Um, yeah, that was very scary. Anybody else have the scary movies? They, I loved Let the Right One In because I loved the movie. I loved the, the relationships in that movie. Yeah, that was my favorite, one of my favorites. But I, I think my favorite scary movie has to be Day of the Dead because I, I you know, I, scary movies. How do you have a favorite scary movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of people do, though, Charlie. Really? I know this. I know this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you said you said the mummy made it made an indelible mark on you. So that could also be on the list. That's right. But <laughs> OK. That, that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, thought it's hmm? the circus of horrors. That one, that circus movie. Oh, circus with Tony Randall. That freaked me out as a kid. The one with Tony Randall. Oh, the the Seven Faces of Doctor Lau. Oh God, that flipped me out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Scared, me. scared me. What was the uh, the little raisin men under the table chasing Kim Darby? <laughs> Anyone remember that one? These guys, they were little crinkled guys, and they came out of the stove, and they, they terrified Kim Darby, and they dragged her away at the end of the movie. It was a really, really terrifying yeah. movie. Yeah. That was before, that was like one of the first doll. doll oh, uh, uh, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Is that it, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark? Um, yes. Wow, Patty, yes, you like, really yeah. are a horror fan. That's great. Wonderful. <laughs> Actually, I cheated on that one. I just looked it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know most of this stuff, so it's all right. So. That's great. Uh, yeah. So that's all good. Uh, Anthony, you got a favorite scary movie? Oh, he's muted again. He went mute again. Oh, nuts. He's talking like crazy, but he's mute. Uh, Dread, I got a note from our producer. It seems like uh, the StreamYard format and his device aren't playing well together. Oh, dear. Uh, Anthony, let me, let me ask you this exit out of the room one more time and come back in again. Maybe that'll, they'll real, that'll reset you. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Where's so, Terry too? Uh, still well, maybe, maybe. stuck in that New York traffic. A zombie gun. Oh, no, indeed. That's right. <laughs> Sam, Sam, there you go. Great question. Let's, uh, let's try to do, do two more. Let's do one more. And then, uh, I, uh, Bruce says we have a really fun one to close out on. So let's, let's do that. What do we have next from Thomas? Ah, I'm going to slightly rephrase this. Uh, did any, have any of you found yourselves in, uh, possession of any, uh, props or collectibles from day of the dead or any of the other, uh, uh, Romero films you may have worked on? I have, I had, um, the original big stills of Night of the Living Dead on the back are, is stamped Night of the Flesh Eaters on it. So Whoa. it was, and I have like uh, maybe eight of them. Uh, of the, the pictures that you see everywhere, I mean, probably the zombies and then uh, it's a phenomenal collection. They're 11 by 14. <laughs> but Day of the Dead, I have like the hats. Do you, does anybody have a hat left? Uh, like I was a zombie on Day of the Dead, or oh you know, right, right, right. I gave everything away, uh, actually. Uh, that's what happened to me. I, 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 unfortunately, I didn't come into this as a collector. I didn't, I didn't understand. Um, I didn't even know that there were people collecting things. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, really. I, I like Lori. I gave stuff away here. <laughs> Somebody would, you know, want to see something. Oh, here, take it. No right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, I don't have any. I don't have any collectibles. I, I'm sorry, I didn't keep the flask. Oh. But the, but the last scene, oh, he throws it away. 
Oh yeah. And it never came back to me. So I don't have any. So it's a, it's a, uh, Tasso, you worked on several, uh, fun features. Uh, got anything uh, you've held on to them? Um, I tried to always take a piece hey. of me. Uh, I had the, my jacket from Dawn of the Dead. And uh, unfortunately, I stored it with my brother, Chris, and he sold it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> Uh, I, I never got the sledgehammer. Tom sold that. To, you know, all that stuff was Tom's. We got from his attic, and so he sold a lot of that stuff off himself. Uh, I had the styrofoam, uh, the rock that I hit. Who did I hit in the head with that? Um, Tim. I, I Anthony. I hit you in the head with rock. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had that. Tim Remember? The the power to, yeah, I gave it away too. I gave my offer uh, away in the war. Uh, so Anthony, did you uh, keep anything from the set? Uh, I had a lot of uh, chains that I wore, and I kept those for a while. But like the rest of them, I gave a lot away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, there you go. Yeah, especially because it was not well received when we did it. And it, it's through the years that it has become a classic, and which we're all very grateful for. And we knew we had something special, but it just wasn't the right timing for it to come out. Dawn of the Dead was, it was not Dawn of the Dead, and I think people expected it to be more like that. And so we were kind of pushed away and forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. I'll tell you what, I said this was going to be our last question. This is going to be our second to last question. We're still uh, we're going to give uh, we're going to give Terry a chance to join us. So let's do two more. Let's do uh, here's one from Jay. Oh, if you could play a role in any film or series, what would it be? Hmm. So I was in the first Friday the Thirteenth with Tom. And we didn't know that was going to be any good either when we were working on it. But obviously it was. And the producer called me. He called Tom. He said, you know where Tasso is? And Tom said, he's standing right here. And he offered me the job as Jason for the next you know, movie, the sequel. And, and I said, no. No kidding. I, I said, no, no, thank you. I mean, uh, you you came to run around yeah. with a with a bag with a bag on oh, your head. So many wonderful parts. <laughs> so Tazo, did been... you regret that? I yes, I still regret it to this day. That's why I keep telling the story. It's a uh -huh. uh, uh, something. It was. I don't know why I said no. I don't really... <laughs> sequels back then. Sequels were terrible. Buzz was terrible. There weren't that many sequels, but the ones that came out were really bad. Uh, <laughs> And I thought, this is silly. You know, I wanted to do something important. And I didn't realize how important that could have been. Jason was like a Frankenstein character for an actor. So it didn't, I didn't think about it then. I just said no. And uh, yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, again, who knows? That's, that's the oddity about, about show business. You know, it's, it's like, you take something for a lark and it becomes a huge success. And uh, that one thing you're invested in, unfortunately, doesn't go anywhere. Mm. So, right. says, oh, we uh, we lost Lori. Hopefully she'll be back. Uh, John. Um, that story. Yeah. If you could write your own, write your own ticket, uh, uh, TV, movie series, whatever. What do you think you'd jump into? Oh, God. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, you know, honestly. Um, I, I, acting scares me. Uh, <laughs> as I get older, it scares me even more, you know. I was, when I was young and foolish, I would jump in and, and you know, regardless of of anything, I'd try to do the job. But any, anymore, I, I don't, I don't want to act. <laughs> it's too hard. It's I, I find it more and more difficult. I don't know. I feel like I got better, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt about getting better, but not not for me. It's I, I'm not overcoming the fear. I used to be able to overcome it. 
I think I. Uh, there are wonderful shows on. I, I'm sorry, I got out of this because I my uh, computer went down. But I, there's so many wonderful roles on, uh, like in Succession. Um, uh, that's oh, a wonderful film. I would love to work with uh, those directors and those actors. I think they're great. And, yeah. um, and there's so many, so many wonderful parts out there. And for old women too. But if you haven't been in the game, people don't know you're there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, uh, that's the hard part. Pardon me? It, that's the hard part, being in the game, mm-hmm. you know, getting into the game. It's then how to play it. Huh? And then how to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Very, yeah, that's why act, most actors stay in the theater because it's more, um, you know, it's not as, they, yeah, they don't deem people stars or anything. It's just really a creative group effort to make a good piece. And uh, that's, uh, you're really more appreciated, I think, in the theater because it's all about celebrity in films. I'm not being, and I uh, honestly, I'm so glad that I left the business when I did to raise my kids. I'm not being sour grapes. I am just saying that um, it's a machine. It's a machine. And uh, yeah, so uh, you step out of the machine and it's still, I'm creative as hell in many different areas of my life, but. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I always thought I would get in, I'd be in the uh, Lord of the Rings movies. When I read the book, I thought for sure when that became a movie, I'd be ready for that. And, oh, uh, nah. Well, you absolutely look the part now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you I'd love to work. What about Guillermo del Toro? Oh, I'd love to work with him. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Very right funny. So and, we all, so all. So. So Sorry, Jarleth. No problem. No problem. Uh, Jarleth, you can write your own ticket. Uh... Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to Night of the Living Dead, too. <laughs> um, but there, there are a couple of movies I was in. There was one called The Art of Getting By. It was an independent film, and I played a character of, a, of a, an art teacher in that. And I actually enjoyed being in that character. I could do more of that. And there was mm-hmm. also a short film called Autumn Heat, where I played a sculptor. Hmm. Is that the word? Yeah, not sculptor. And uh, it was a very short film, but I liked that character as well. You know, uh, other than that, I, 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 I'm so far from dictating anything on dic- when it comes to TV or, or film that, uh, you know, that's, that's why I went there. I, as for theater, uh, anything that makes the audience laugh, I'd be happy to do. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. Anthony, if you could uh, write your own ticket, uh, what role would you pick? Oh, he's got that mute icon again. Oh, no, Anthony, you're muted again. I'm so sorry. Must be a connection thing. Uh, it's it's something. I don't know what device he's working off of, but... Oh, dear. Uh, all right, I'll tell you what. Let's... We got one final question. It's supposed to be really good with us. Roll that one. And hopefully we can get it back in to answer that. And from Carrie, what is everyone's favorite Halloween candy? Snickers. Rolos. Reese's Pieces. Snickers. Reese's Pieces. And what else? Lori doesn't eat candy. I guess not. <laughs> they don't eat sugar. Uh, she's. Uh, I also think she's. Her signal's frozen. Candy you, corn. Ta- oh, candy corn. Okay. Hello. All right. It really eats. Hello. Hello. There he Anthony, is. what's your favorite Halloween candy? Uh, hmm. Clark bars. <laughs> I love it. Oh. And Reese's peanut butter cups. Ooh. All right. Here you go. I got. I got a Halloween one for you. There. There you go, Lorraine. Enjoy. Very nice. And, uh, Very nice. And, uh, Thank you. Tasso, what's your favorite? Rolos. Oh, Ooh, nice. Very oh, underrated. yeah. Very, very, very underrated candy. And there yeah. you have it. There you have it, Carrie. <laughs> Hope you enjoy your Halloween treats. Panelists, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? Thank you. Thanks for, thanks Thank for you. Time. Thank you very much. Really. But let me just say on behalf of myself and our audience, Thank you once again for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. It's been my absolute honor to have you all here today and serve you. Thank you to our audience for joining us, and thank you for your great questions. Have a happy and safe Halloween, everybody, and don't forget that smiles are free. Spend them often. Thank you. Thank you.